It is time for my largest speed reviews video. Today, we have, I think, 45 products that I am going to be speed reviewing. If you're new to my channel, speed reviews are my heart. They are my pride and joy on this channel because I want to be the person that actually comes back and updates you on all of the products that I've been testing. So um, I've been testing a lot recently and it's been like a month since my last speed reviews. Every single thing I try goes into my speed reviews drawer and I cleaned out this morning. It was overflowing so I reorganized everything and I ended up laying 45 products that I have tested in multiple ways with multiple products for multiple days. So I feel confident to give you my final opinion on these products. I'm actually going to be splitting this one in two parts since it's so large. So you guys will get part two tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. But let's just, um, let's actually make this speedy. Let's get into it. So I have two primers. The first one is a drugstore one from L'Oreal. This is the Prime Lab Pore, Minimi Pore, bleh, Pore Minimizer. It's supposed to blur pores and smooth skin over time. Um, I've been using this over some time. I don't notice anything really with it. I don't notice it smoothing anything. I just notice it kind of making my makeup look a little bit more dry and pilly. So I do think L'Oreal does have some good primers, but this is one that I haven't really been enjoying. Now on the contrary, one that I've been enjoying from L'Oreal as well is the True Match Lumi Glotion. Old news, I'm super late to the game. When I was a makeup artist, I saw this in a lot of kits. It's beautiful over the chest for brides. I think it's nice and hydrating and it does add a gorgeous glow to the skin. It feels like lotion. It doesn't feel too heavy. If you go really, really close, I do feel like you can see like micro fine glitters that aren't exactly what I'm looking for, but that's only if you're super close. So then you put a little bit of foundation on top and you can't even see it. So this is truly a gorgeous product for a glowy skin, glowy base, and then over the decollete area as well. So yes, the hype was worth it. Super late. Can't believe it took me so long to jump on this bandwagon, but I'm happy I finally did. Three foundations, foundation kind of products. So first one is from Hourglass. This is the hydrating skin tint. Love this. This was a summer favorite. It gives the perfect amount of coverage while still feeling very lightweight on the skin. It does give a glowier finish. It didn't apply great today because I had that L'Oreal smoothing primer that I didn't like so it looked a little dry but on days where I prep properly I truly love the glow that this leaves behind and for it being a lighter weight glowier product it actually lasts a really long time it looks great all day and it doesn't feel heavy over the skin one of my new favorite skin tints I have to say then we have the Viral Maybelline Superstay Skin Tint. So at, at face value, I do really like this, but I do find it can look a little heavy on the skin, especially if I over apply this. So less is more with this product. When I do over apply it, I just feel like my skin looks a little extra porous, makeup looks a little heavier, I look a little sweaty and greasy. So this is not my favorite when over applied, but with just a little bit, I do enjoy it. It does feel lightweight on the skin but still provides like a medium-ish kind of coverage and it's very very thin if you keep it at a thin layer so I would say I like this this is a good pickup from the drugstore but it's nothing game-changing for me I do think it's a little overhyped as somebody who doesn't have perfect skin I can see if you have perfect skin to begin with enjoying this type of product but I do find that it emphasizes you know the not so perfect stuff that my skin has and then the last foundation that I have is from Fenty Beauty. I'm actually pretty quick to get back to you guys on this because I've been using it a lot. And I really want to update you because my review is not as glowing as my initial full review that I did. The longer that I've used this, honestly, the less flattering I found it's become, especially because I've been using it side by side with other foundations. So now I can kind of see it's not that great. So I like it for just a little swipe, swipe, blendy, blendy, even out a little bit more. But the more swipes I do, the more product I apply, the more cakey and drying this looks, the more it emphasizes my texture. It's a product that sits on top of the skin. You can just see it. It doesn't become one with the skin. So I like it because it's super duper malleable, but I cannot apply this 
as like a medium coverage foundation, I need to keep it really, really light because it does stay on top of this skin, which I don't like. It's not really skin-like. Okay, three concealers, though I do have a lot of concealers that are in my rotation right now because so many have launched, but here are three that I've used a lot. So first we have from Tower 28, the Serum Concealer, and this is one of the newer concealers, but I've used it so much because I've simply loved it. It literally blends into the skin like a serum. I have it on this part of my eye, but it still provides a pretty good coverage, but it, it goes with the flow in terms of you can wear this with a skin tint and it would still look good, but you can also wear this with the full coverage foundation. It would still look good. If my foundation's looking a little dry, I'll kind of blend this a little bit over it to add some extra hydration. And if you saw my initial review, it's actually beautiful all over the skin as like a lighter-ish coverage foundation. It's just a beautiful finish. Very, very, very skin-like, extremely versatile. I am still on a high with this concealer. This is one of my favorites that have launched this year. I'm going to go ahead and stick with everything that I said in that review. Everything still 100% accurate. One of the concealers of the year, if not the concealer of the year. Another one that's pretty similar to it is Makeup Forever HD Skin in that it's a little bit more on the hydrating side. This does have a lighter coverage than the Tower 28, and I really enjoyed this. My summer concoction while I was vacationing all of July was the Hourglass Skin Tint Veil, and then these Makeup Forever concealers. These are perfect to pair with your tinted moisturizers and skin tints because it has the same finish, the same effect, it is a nice product. I mean, I really, really liked this until I tried the Tower 28 because the Tower 28, in my opinion, is just creme de la creme that this kind of pales in comparison. But it is a nice light coverage concealer if you've been looking for one to wear with your skin tints. I very much enjoyed this. And then the last concealer that I have, also pretty new, but I've just been using it almost every day. Well, not every day, but it's been like, I've been comparing it to a lot of other concealers. This is a Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Awakening Concealer. So this one's a little bit different than the ones that have been launching recently because this one has more of a matte dry down. I feel like dewy hydrating concealers are what is trending right now and what the brands are coming out with. But I like the fact that it's matte because it's a little bit more perfecting. It's a little bit more long wearing. I think he did a great job with this concealer. It's perfect to pair with the Surreal Skin foundation. It's still that same kind of fuller coverage, more matte dry down, but it's going to last you a long time. Great for evenings. Wears very, very well. I've been comparing it a lot to the House Labs, which the House Labs isn't in this video. I still kind of want to test it some more. They, it wears very similar to the House Labs, but this one has more of a matte dry down. I've been struggling to decide which of the two I like better, but I do enjoy this. It's not going to be a top shelf concealer like the Tower 28, but it still is very, very nice. All right, bronzy, contour -y kind of products. So first we have from Jones Road, the gel bronzers. Unfortunately, these did not work out for me. Um, I just find wherever I apply it, the area just looks really, really patchy and it kind of disrupts everything underneath. It kind of gaslit me today a little bit when I applied it. I was like, wait, is it patchy? But then I found the patch and I was like, yes. So, I mean, not that I'm celebrating about it, but I needed to prove it to you guys. So this is gonna work better on bare skin, but especially if you're wearing something with fuller coverage, oh, it's just gonna be really patchy and noticeable. Yeah, no, I'm not a fan of these. These did not work out for me. And then I've also been using on the cream front here from ColourPop, they launched their first ever bronze sticks and these are pretty nice. My my favorite shade if you're a skin tone match with me is Laguna Beach. I mean, these I am not like partying about. I don't think that these are super duper amazing, but they, they're just one of those products that gets the job done. You know, they're more on the affordable side. They have a nice color range. I don't have anything bad to say about these. They don't stand out in a lineup of my favorites, but reliable, 
good solid formula, a nice addition to their line. And I do like these bronzery kind of products in a stick form. And then we have our powder option from Physicians Formula. This is the Butter Bronzer Contour Palette. So they do have this in a couple different shades. So this is very, very nice. It's a beautiful, buttery, smooth formula from Physicians Formula. Typically, their palettes tend to be a much better value than their individual products. I don't find myself reaching for this shade too much. It's a little too deep on my skin tone. I'm mostly using this shade, which I think could be like a tad lighter. And then this one is just a very nice bronzer. It works really great. It's very convenient more so than anything. If I just need an extra little contour, an extra little pop of brightness, I'll go into this. I use it today in my crease because I was using cream products on the eyes, but I wanted a little bit of a powder bronzer to work as a background. So this has been very, very useful. I highly recommend it. I've enjoyed having this sitting in my makeup drawer in front of me. As you know, right now what's super trendy is blushes. So many blushes these last few months I've tried. So starting off with cream, we have the Charlotte Tilbury Beach Sticks, which were re-promoted. So these launched a while ago, like years ago at this point, discontinued them, brought them back because at this point, this style of product is much more popular than it was. And I think this is a very nice formula. My thing is the price, it's a bit overpriced for like the chubby cream stick because there's lots of brands that do have a pretty good formula nailed down. I would say this feels a little bit more powdery than most of the popular chubby sticks and that's a good thing because it does help with longevity. They are advertised as cheek and lip sticks. Some shades work better than others. The only shade I like on the lips is this Formentera shade. Very pretty, but these blend really great. They apply really great if you're into these beach stick style formulas or chubby stick, excuse me. And I do have a full review and demo of all three of these shades. So I like these. I'm, I'm not like reaching for them a ton, but I don't have anything really bad to say about them. I don't know, I feel like I've been reaching for this chubby stick a little bit more and it also was a much more reasonable price. This one is really great from Palladio. This is the I'm Blushing 2-in-1 Cheek and Lip Tint. I'm not amazed with this on the lips. You know how I feel. To me, a chubby stick needs to work on the cheeks and lips, but very few actually do. They normally look kind of dry and chalky. I'm looking for this shade. <laughs> so I have the shade Sweetheart, but this was phenomenal for vacation for my no makeup makeup look where I just blend a little bit of concealer and then pop this on the cheeks. Super malleable, decently long wearing, and affordable. Honestly, I do like the Charlotte Tilbury, but just based on the price difference versus performance, I think the Palladio is a better value. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous formula. And then ColourPop launched all of these cream blushes now in this pressed form. So, okay, I'm using the shade Bali Baby. Not my favorite cream blush formula. I don't dislike this formula. Some shades I think lack a little bit of pigment and they feel a little bit dry in the pan. You almost gotta warm it up with your finger. But performance wise, I don't have anything bad to say. They're probably not as creamy and malleable as I prefer, but that also helps aid in longevity, which is a little bit more important. Some of the shades you do need to build up. They have a nice range. I mean, I think that these are solid. I personally like these better than their blush sticks, but as with a lot of ColourPop products, you know, not in love with these, but they get the job done and they're affordable. So who am I to fault them for that? Also from ColourPop, this was from the collection that launched at Target. Earlier in the month, I did a What's New at ColourPop video, and I didn't keep all of the colors from this collection, but I thought I'd update you because I actually have been reaching for these more than expected. So I used today the Wish Me Luck blush, and I really like the blushes in this collection because they have a little bit of a sheen to them, some more than others, but I've been enjoying these as blush toppers. I've been using a lot of cream blush products since so much has come out, but I've loved these to top them because they do have that shimmer. So use-wise, I mean, putting my money where my mouth is, I have been actually, not actually these were set PR, but still, I've been actually using them so that should tell you something I haven't been using the highlight a lot though this is a shade gold mine I do have it on this side of my face a hint deeper than what I prefer for myself but it's solid more impressed with the blushes but 
These little pressed powder blushes, highlights, and bronzers from ColourPop are really, really nice. I do think that they stand out in the line. Also, this Isam blush palette. Okay, I love this new line of artistry palettes that they came out with in the last few months, and they're continuously like growing this line. I think the packaging's phenomenal for makeup artists. If I were still a working makeup artist, these would absolutely be in my kit. So this blush palette has come in handy whenever I just needed a color to pop on. I would grab for this because I knew this had the shades. You know, it has really like pink, peachy, warm shades, plummy, and you can blend these, mix these. It's a really useful palette that even though I would say it is directed for makeup artists, I've been reaching for this a lot. The formulas are smooth. You know, these blush formulas are what I would call reliable. They're not something that I'm like, oh, breathing, dying, salivating over this formula, but they're reliable and you have every shade that you could need. Maybe not, but <laughs> there's a lot of shades in here. Been loving this, been using that pretty, pretty often. And then the last powder blush that I have is from Givenchy. This is the Prisme Libre blush. I picked up the shade number one, which... I was just attracted to it because it's a cool toned pink, which is super trendy right now. But I gotta be honest, this doesn't look that cute on me. The formula feels really, really smooth. Like I like the formula. I don't like the color I picked out for myself. So I just am saying it here on my Sephora sale wish list. Another one of these colors because the formula felt quite nice. Unfortunately for me, liquid and cream highlighters are also very trendy. Not my favorite style of product, but I do have this Palladio I'm Glowing Creamy Stick Luminizer, another chubby stick. Honestly, nice for what it is. Doesn't stand out to me. I don't typically like these kinds of products, but I don't find that it disrupts anything underneath. The vacation makeup, like I said, a little bit of concealer, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. This did look good on those no makeup makeup days. So again, it's very affordable, which is really, really nice about this product. So I do recommend this if you like this cream style product. And the chubby stick just feels so good in my hands. Also, this one from ColourPop, I gave another light sticks a chance in the shade Glazy just to try it out. And I reconfirmed with myself, not the formula for me, didn't really like this. I just find these to look a little chalky on my cheek and then to disrupt whatever products I have underneath. So yeah, this, um, I thought maybe this time could be different. It wasn't. We gotta stop giving second chances. And then this last one is the Lottie London Cheek Glow Liquid Highlight Wand. Obviously coming from Miss Charlotte Tilbury's bag with this one, but did they did they rise to the occasion? I'm gonna go with no on this one. There's one key thing about this product that's missing. It's the glow. It's not very glowy. It just doesn't give what it needs to give. It reminds me, I would say this is a half decent dupe of the Laura Mercier blush or highlight wands, but again, a little less gl less glowy. Like the Laura Mercier, I could tell, had more of an intentional subtle glow. This one just didn't quite hit it. So, not a fan of that one, unfortunately. And then the last highlighter I have, oof, this is like. This is a top shelf highlighter here from Too Faced. It's the Moon Crush from the Cosmo collection that they came out with. Out of this world highlight, and it's pretty out of this world, super random. I'm using the shade Shooting Star. It's super buttery. It feels like a very luxe formula. And I just feel like it's so random because this is from a limited edition Too Faced collection that I know we all are going to forget about. It's going to go on sale for 50% off and normally they lack in quality. Um, But for some reason, they went off on this random highlighter that I wasn't interested in at all in the collection and it's the best highlighter they've ever launched. One of the best highlighters that has launched recently. It's just so buttery, creamy blends into the skin so seamless. If this goes on 50%, you better you better get on this because it is worth full price. It's such 
a beautiful powder highlight. Next up from Physicians Formula, we have these Butter Glow Pressed Powders. So this shade right here, the darker one, Natural Glow, not made for my skin tone. I tried my hand at using it as a bronzer a couple times. It's like way too red. It looks pretty on the eyes, but not for my skin tone. I'm probably gonna declutter this honestly, just because it's not for me. But I do have this Translucent Glow one, which is obviously more for my skin tone. It's quite pretty. You can concentrate it with a dense brush in a more concentrated area and it's like a pretty natural highlight. Or you can use just a really loosely packed brush and it almost works like an hourglass ambient lighting powder where it'll, it'll just give a little soft glow and kind of you know, buff everything together. I don't think it's as nice as an hourglass powder, but kind of same effect. Maybe give it a go. I really liked this. I've enjoyed incorporating this into my routine. I think they did a nice job with this powder. It's just what's different about it compared to the hourglass is it's a little less refined, right? There's a little bit more shimmers, a little bit more glimmer, a little bit more metallicness that just it doesn't hit. It's not as soft focused as the hourglass, but it's still very, very pretty for adding that final glow to the face that's subtle and just perceptible in person. And then the last product of part one is from Hard Candy. This is the Sheer Envy Longwear Setting Spray. Does this do anything? I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know. So I did the eyeliner test, right, where I put the eyeliner, two lines, sprayed only one side, and saw if they were different. But th the problem with that was the eyeliner that I used was long wearing, so it didn't come off on either side. I wouldn't say I struggle with longevity of makeup, but I feel like this did nothing. I like the spray, I like the sensation, I like using a spray and using a sponge to kind of set it in, but I wouldn't necessarily say this makes my makeup last longer, but I, I don't dislike it. It's just a spray. So yeah, so that's all I have for part one of the speed reviews. Make sure you guys subscribe because tomorrow I'm going to have eyes and lips. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys found it helpful and I will catch you guys in tomorrow's video. All right, guys, have a good one.